Good evening, everybody. I want to welcome you out to Wednesday night Bible study, Springfield First Baptist Church. We've got uh, several to mention for prayer this evening. Uh, Jimmy's brother-in-law, Mike White, will go tomorrow to find out about his treatments. Uh, Jimmy, you said about six of them, he thinks. Glendora got her uh, leg, and uh, she's waiting on uh, physical therapy to come out to uh, get up and how learn how to walk again. And we thankful for that. Uh, Tommy Baker's got a co-worker that uh, has surgery Friday for colon cancer. Let's remember him. Uh, continue to remember the Williams family, loss of Lenny. Uh, we were in the grocery store uh, Monday and found out Eddie Holloway was supposed to have surgery today, but uh, when I contacted him, he had just left the doctor and uh, his lungs have got to improve before he can have surgery on his stomach. So y'all continue to remember remember him. Uh, sent out a message about, uh, when I sent out Eddie's message, I sent out a message about our brother-in-law's dad, uh, Dub Parker. Uh, we thought he was gonna have surgery yesterday morning, uh, but he had surgery Monday afternoon. And uh, the break uh, was just below the hip. And so he's uh, spending some time in Huntsville Hospital. And then we'll, I think, go on to rehab after, after the hospital stay. Uh, I'm supposed to find out in the next week uh, about my test and uh, appreciate y'all's continued prayers about that got a an appointment on the doctor's appointment on friday the 26th so if i don't know by then surely i'll know that day uh remember our country i saw uh, some more disturbing news uh, well i see disturbing news throughout the day but saw some more disturbing news right before we came Day about uh, different things going on, and uh, I think uh, as we talk about from time to time, we need God to step in and heal our land. Because uh, uh, what seems like what man's trying to do, like we say from time to time, is is just making a mess. And uh, so let's uh, let's remember our country. Also remember our church. Remember uh, Randy as he prepares to fill in Sunday morning. And uh, remember, no be no p.m. service uh, Sunday night. Uh, anybody else got any, anybody to mention before we have a word of prayer? Any announcements? Let's uh, have a word of prayer, and then we'll get started this evening. Heavenly Father, we... Thank you, Lord, tonight for your many blessings. Thank you for allowing us to be gathered as we are. We thank you for these that's uh, gathered here with us tonight at the uh, church, at the church house. And, Lord, we're thankful for these watching over Facebook. And, Lord, we want to lift up these we've mentioned for prayer today. Uh, some are needing surgery, facing surgery. Some are uh, lost loved ones. Some... Uh, Lord, uh, are facing cancer treatments, and Miss Glendora is uh, going to need your help as she begins to use, use this new leg. And Lord, we, we just ask you to continue to be, be with her, and Lord, be with Randy as he prepares for uh, Sunday morning. And Lord, just uh, be with our country, our leaders, Lord, uh, that they that we would all, our leaders on, on down to everyone, would seek your face, Lord, in, in, in each and everything that we do. And, uh, Lord, uh, be with our church. Be with us tonight, Lord, as we look to your word. And we thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, Amy asked from time to time, why do you watch yourself? on video and I want to try to say all the mistakes that I make where I 
don't make them a second time. Uh, Sunday evening, I said turn to Second Peter chapter two, and uh, so that's what Justin threw up here behind me, and it was supposed to have been First Peter chapter two. So I I was reading First Peter chapter two while he had Second Peter chapter two uh, on the screen behind me, and uh, and then Sunday morning uh, I made a mistake of saying the Bible says so-and-so, and and the Bible doesn't actually say it. It teaches it, and we're going to look a little bit about that tonight. The Bible doesn't actually say little as much when God's in it, but it certainly teaches that. Uh, Little as much as God when God is in it is a song written by Kitty Louise Suffield, S-U-F-F-I-E-L-D. Little's much when God is in it. Labor not for wealth or fame. There's a crown and you can win it if you go in Jesus' name. So tonight, let's look to John chapter 6. Last Wednesday night, we finished up the book of Mark. John chapter 6. And we'll read the first uh, 15 verses there. And uh, see how far we... get with this. Verse 1, it says, After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias, and a great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. And Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come, and to him he saith unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, There is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes. But what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. There there was much uh, grass in the place so the men sat down in number about 5,000 and Jesus took the loaves and when he had given thanks he distributed to the disciples and the disciples uh, to them that were set down and likewise of the fishes as much as they would when they were filled he said unto his disciples gather up the fragments that remain that nothing be lost therefore they gathered themselves uh, they gathered them together and filled 12 baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves which remained over and above and to them that had eaten then those men when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did said this is of a truth that prophet that should come into the world and when Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king he departed again into a mountain himself alone so uh we'll go back up to verse one uh i don't know how many folks have ever tried to feed a group of folks now uh we've uh on occasion i guess i mean the most we've ever fed was 400 that sound good uh Somebody had to buy the food, somebody had to prepare the food, and thankfully, me and Amy found a caterer that worked pretty cheap. But Jesus had 5,000 men. Now, uh, the book of John doesn't say this, but this is, it did say there in verse 10 that the uh, number was, so the men sat down in number about 5,000. Uh, other gospels say this that's besides the women and children so 
uh, if everybody had a wife, it'd be 10,000. If everybody had one child, it'd be 15,000. And two ch children, two childs, two children, that'd be up around 20,000. So how many p total people were there? More than 400. Now at Legacy, we uh, had a few things that we tried to feed uh, probably around 250, 200, 250. I can't imagine having 5,000 men. That'd be a lot of eggs to break, Jimmy. Derek would have to get out two big pots at least to fix that many eggs. Bacon, man, we'd have to have a crew to come in and fix enough bacon for 5,000 men. Gravy, I don't know if that skillet's big enough for James to make enough gravy for that. We would have to have a lot of help. But I want you to notice down through there that there wasn't no help going to be found. So back up verse verse one, a great multitude, verse one and two, great multitude followed him. And as he sat there, uh, after these things, Jesus went up to the Sea of Galilee, over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of uh, Tiberias. And a great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. A lot of folks were tagging along for the miracles that he did. Uh, I want to remind you about something, though. If you'll turn back to John chapter 2, and uh, we'll start in verse 23, go down through verse 25. Verse 23 says, Now when... He was in Jerusalem at the Passover, so this is uh, a little bit ahead of uh, about a year, according to Schofield's Bible, the year before what we're reading in chapter 6, because it was still at the Passover, uh, just a year apart. And in the feast day, many believed in his name when they saw the miracles which he did. So... Most of us know that in chapter 2, that was the time that he turned the water into wine at the, at the wedding in Cana. And as we talked about Sunday, he used just some, probably the simplest material, water, plenty of it. But he performed a miracle with it. And how many... Uh, times uh, maybe you and I might think that it's something big that he needs to use. No, sometimes it's just the small things that he uses. And so many believed in his name when they saw the miracles of which he did in verse 24, but Jesus did not commit himself unto them because he knew all men. He knows all there is to know about us. My granddaddy had a saying, pulling the wool over somebody's eyes. We might pull the wool over somebody's eyes and have them fooled, but we ain't going to fool God. He knows all about us. Verse 25, needed not that any man should testify of man before he knew what was in man. So uh, this multitude in chapter 6 was following him because... Uh, because they saw his miracles, which he did on them, which were diseased. But remember, Jesus committed himself to those only that had the faith to believe that he was the Son of God. Now, uh, chapter 2, those people over there, you know what us Baptists would have done? We'd have voted them in. We might even made them wet before they left. That looked good on a church report. But if Jesus don't commit himself to us, then we're lost as a goose. As Brother Butler used to say, we can say all 
all day long that we're going to heaven, but does God know we're coming? Because God don't know we're coming, we ain't going. Jesus has gone to prepare a place for us. And he's coming again to receive us. If you look at verse 3, Jesus went up to a mountain and there he sat with his disciples. Uh, verse 4 reminds us that the Passover, a face of the Jews, was nigh. Now, what I, what I look back over there in, in chapter number 2, Schofield has that dated as A.D. 30. And as we said a while ago, this was a year later in A.D. 31 is where he got this uh, dated. And when Jesus lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come to him, he said to Philip, when shall we buy bread that these may eat? Jesus wants to meet our needs. Here, uh, missing a meal is the need he wanted to meet. He did not want to send these people away. He did not want them to, to miss this meal. Now, what was that saying John Barry had? You got three meals a day over here at this house. Corn meal. Miss a, and one, the last one was miss a meal. Uh, I forget what the middle one was. Corn meal, something meal, and miss a meal. Skip Maybe skip a meal, miss a meal. I don't Miss a meal was the last one. But Jesus did not want them to miss a meal. One writer says this, uh, Jesus was showing that he was concerned with every need in life, even a missed meal, and that he was able to provide for every need if man would just believe him. Therefore, he taught a necessary lesson that there are four ways to uh, respond to needs. And uh, he wanted to meet the need. And he knows all about each and every one of our needs, whatever they may be. Uh, Peter, uh, Phil, I mean, Philip asked a question. One writer calls it uh, pessimism. Verse number seven, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them. Now, uh, the your, your word you might have a, a different translation of the Bible and you have a uh, word I think it's pronounced denarii that be more than one denarius a denarius is a day's wage for the average worker so they had two hundred of them. In other words, 200 days worth of money for the average worker. So Philip's question was, Lord, what is that with all these people? Well, I think we can go back to that song title. Little is much when God's in it. When he talked to us about faith, how did he talk to us about it? Did he say, if you had faith like the size of Mount Rushmore, or Mount McKinley, Mount Everest, if you have faith like a boulder, no, he said, if you have faith as of a grain of mustard seed. Uh, if you hadn't seen mustard seed lately and forgot about how small it is. Uh, going either way, I guess Big Star still be open with the James when we leave here. No? Dollar General will, and maybe they got some mustard seed in there. Either way you go. Uh, you'll pass. If you go far enough, you'll pass five or six dollars, General. Uh, Melanie, out your way, they 
Has the new one opened up yet? Not yet. Not yet. It's fixing to be. They got the sign up and everything. Uh, mustard seed, you ain't going to be able to see it. If there was uh, one tag to the back of Keith Balch's building yonder, I, I, I wouldn't know it unless somebody had a big sign draped over it. Here is a big, here is a mustard seed. And uh, I don't see any signs, or therefore I'm going to go out on the limb and say there ain't no mustard seed on the back of that. You say, well, why are you saying all that? I want to remind you about something else. Ephesians 2. In verse number 8 and 9. And we might even get dig into verse 10 while we're there. Ephesians 2, verse 8 and 9. So uh, we don't need to stop by Dollar General, see if they got mustard seed and tote around a little bit in their pocket and say, well, look at all the faith that I got. Because the Bible says we have faith as a mustard seed. You know what I'm Let's think about where the faith comes from. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God. Where does our faith come from? It comes from God. He gives it to us. Not of works, lest any man should boast. I think about when I read that verse, Look what I've done. No. It should be this way. Look what God's done. Look what the Lord Jesus Christ has done in my life, in your life. Not thinking about what we've done. Look what he's done. Verse 10, for we are his workmanship. You know, a lot of folks say they are self-made Individual, self-made man, self-made woman, whatever. I'd be careful. Had different ones through the years uh, say, well, we need to be testing God. We need to try him. I'm not one of them. I believe we need to believe in him using the faith that he gives us. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus and the good works which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So let's say you get a phone call, you get a text tonight that says that 5,000 men coming over to your house. And they're hungry. What you going to do? As y'all know, I've watched a lot of video i watched uh i didn't watch it all because i slept part of the time today this guy these group of guys building a cabin out in the middle of nowhere and uh it was a little cabin but it took them about four hours worth of video to get that thing done and i don't even think they that's just season one they still got season two to go and they're trying to fix the inside of it so uh Watch a lot of videos, and I watched one this morning. This guy used to, back before the pandemic hit, they would go out and buy different things. And, of course, they, they had to go out and buy some stuff for this video he made that I watched today. Uh, but, or maybe it was last night. It all runs together. But uh, he would do, like, uh, the best fast food sandwich, the... Best hot sauce, the best this, the best that. And then the pandemic hit. And he made a video, the best snack food I have in my pantry. So whenever I watched it, last night, this morning, whenever it was, it was the best frozen pizza. And they just went out, found out that Walmart was sold out of a lot of them, but he got uh, about six or seven different frozen pizzas, and his wife cooked them, and he told them which, he just took a bite out of the pepperoni pizza and said which one he thought was best. And uh, he picked one as best that I, that I mean, we've never tried. We're going to have to venture out and uh, find some fresh Edda frozen 
pizza. He said that was the best. Uh, what would we do? 5,000 people coming over. What are we going to do? Well, Jesus asked that, knowing exactly what he was going to do. Philip, when, when, where are we going to buy bread that these people may eat? He didn't want to send them away hungry. And Philip says in verse 7, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may have a little. Just a little appetizer. Just get, Lord, Lord, we can't, don't even have enough to give them an appetizer to send them home. Verse 8. Then Simon Peter's brother Andrew said to him, There is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? When we were at Good Springs, uh, I can't remember what season it was, but we did a play surrounding this right here. And uh, the way the play was written was, and this ain't Bible, okay? Kind of like the little as much when God's in it. it. Not in the Bible, but it's taught. The theory, the idea is taught in the Bible. The play had in it that the mama had packed all that for him. Is that the case? I don't know. But he's the only one with any food packed. So is this enough to feed just this little boy? I don't know. But he's the one that had it. And why else would he have had it if it wasn't the case? But what are they among so many? So we might go to the cabinet and have 5,000 men. We ain't talking about the women and children coming with them and open up a pack of sardines and find out that somebody done ate all of them but two. And we got some loaf bread. Would we? We probably would not. We'd probably be like the Mosley family the year we had uh, some Halloween trick-or-treaters. Somebody's at the door. And we didn't know. We'd never, Steve, that's the only one we've ever had. So we didn't know how to act. Finally, we opened the door and handed some candy out, but uh, they hadn't made a return trip, so uh, maybe this year. Verse 10, Jesus said, make the men sit down. Now, I'm, I'm just going, some of y'all have been at some of, our, some of the legacy events, and we, we couldn't find the best way to feed 250. Would it be best to make one big line and have all 250 people line up and get their food one at a time? Would it be better for us, for the men to, to serve uh, everybody? Would or have a group serve everybody? Would it be, what would be best? Well, we didn't ever find out what was best. Somebody would get upset somewhere along the way, whatever we did. Uh, my food's not here. They've done the eight. They've done got dessert. Our, my, our first thing ain't here. Or why did they get to go first? Why didn't my table get to go first? I, we didn't ever hear that part, but that might be an argument somebody might, might give up. So why did he have them sit down in groups? The Bible does say this. God is not the author of confusion. He is not the author of confusion. But, and I want, I want you to notice what he did do. Uh, so there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in number, about 5,000. Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, I ought to be an example for us before we eat the loaf bread. Before we got we eat whatever's before us. 
that we give thanks for it. Why? Well, if we want to be a Christian, what does that mean? Christ-like. Before they ate, Jesus gave thanks. So he took the loaves, gave thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes as much as they would. So let's go back to what we're thinking about a while ago. Five loaves of bread, and let's just call them two sardines. Remember the question. This is not sufficient. 200 penny worth of bread is not 200 days wages of bread. A day's wage for the common worker, 200 days worth of bread would not be sufficient for them to have a little bit. Andrew comes to him and said, well, what we've got is five loaves, two fishes. Have them sit down. He gave thanks, distributed. Verse 12, when... They were all filled. Mama reckoned any of these folks was Mosley's. So they ate more than most, probably double the people next to them. And even the Mosley's got filled. I've known of some Mosley's going to an all-you-can-eat seafood buffet. And being told that the buffet is closed for you. So, I guess the new advertisement would be all you can eat except Mosley. And you get two trips. Most places you go, you get a free refill, Sandy. Amy was, uh, we was out eating fish one night, and I reckon she was kind of thirsty. And uh lady finally told her, said, uh, well, I'm going to get you another refill, but I'm going to charge you for this one. So we had to pay uh, another drink for another drink. Uh, so is it all you can eat? Is it all you can drink? This was all you could eat buffet here, and it was served to you. When they were all... Field, little as much when God's in it. Jesus thanked the Lord for what they had, and it went a long way. Now, let's, let's, don't stop there. They were When they were all filled, Jesus said, Gather up the fragments that remain that nothing be fed. Now, if any of them was named Marty Mosley back then, he would probably have had a funny look on his face. What do, you, what do you mean, fragments? Five loaves, two fishes. What do you mean, fragments? Leftovers? There can't be no leftovers. When they were all filled, Jesus said, gather up the fragments that remain that nothing be lost. Well, I'm going to go back to some other things that we've talked about. Jesus got in a boat. Let us go over to the other side. Where were they going? Let us go to the other side. We read Sunday, all powers given to me in heaven and earth, go you therefore. Well, we talked about it. And uh, he said in Acts 1 and verse 8 that uh, he had all power and uh, we was going to be, after the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost came upon us, we was going to be witnesses for him. If Jesus says these things, guess what? They're going to come to pass. So even if Marty Mosley, some guy named Marty Mosley was there and he was going to help gather up the fragments, there shouldn't have been no funny look on Marty Mosley's face because Jesus said, gather up what's left. How many folks ate that day? I don't know. 5,000 men did. And nobody left hungry. Nobody left hungry. Verse 13, Therefore they gathered them together and filled 12 baskets. Now, 
Somebody says, how big's the baskets? Does it matter? Five loaves, two fishes. What was it, a foot-long loaf, or does it matter? Five thousand men. He fed 5,000 men with five loaves, two fishes, and filled 12 baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which remained over and above them that had eaten. Verse 14, now remember they was following because of the miracles. Verse 14, then these men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, this is of a truth that prophet that should come into the world. But I'm going to take you back to what we read in John chapter 2. Jesus knows all about us. So here they are praising him. Look at the next verse. When Jesus therefore perceived that they would come, take him by force, make him king, he departed again into a mountain. This time he went alone. Not time to make him king yet. He coming back though. He coming back. He's king of kings, lord of lords. He's not coming back second time as a baby. Coming back as king. Has anybody got any comments down through verse number 15? Well, we're going to close there, and uh, we thank all y'all for coming. Thank the folks on Facebook for tuning in tonight. And uh, remember, uh, church, uh, Sunday morning, Sunday's Father's Day, and uh, Randy will be filling in for us. and be no PM service, and I'll be uh, recording a lesson for next Wednesday night. And... Uh, Lord willing, Justin, to be able to show that this here. And uh, also, the Lord willing, I'll be posting that to Facebook as well. And uh, so, it'll be next Wednesday at 7 o'clock. So, and uh, we're going to try to get it in, uh, what was it you said, 1062 by something other? Where I don't look so white-headed. Ten eighty by seven twenty, so I don't look so white headed. So, now if I show up with all black hair again, y'all gonna know something. I done got into something. But uh, we're gonna have a word of prayer, and then we'll just be dismissed tonight. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. Thank you for allowing us to be gathered as we are. Thank you for the technology we have, Lord, to broadcast the Facebook Live and. Lord, we want to lift up these we've mentioned for prayer tonight. Lord, you know each and every need in, the, in each situation. Uh, you heal those that need healing, comfort those who need comforting. And Lord, uh, just be with us all as we go our separate ways this evening. Give us a safe journey home, a good, safe rest of the week. Be with Randy, Lord, as he prepares for Sunday morning. And Lord, uh, we just thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to say uh, good night to our Facebook friends. And uh, remember, I love you. God, most of all, God loves you. And uh, hope to see you again in our next service.